2022 has been one hell of a year, and within that time, I've had the opportunity to review a lot of different products, some of which were eh, okay, some of which were totally outstanding. Now, I've done a lot of videos this year, and if you haven't caught up on all of them, let me save you some time and give you my top 10 products of 2022. We're gonna start off with a product that maybe impressed me the most of this year, and that's the Heat Straps Chief Coat. This thing is unbelievable. To me, it felt like kind of the end result of people who go, nah, I need a tougher work jacket, I need a tougher work jacket, you know? And then they finally end up at this monstrosity. Now, this is the same waxed twill that the uh, Ship John Wills jacket is made out of, but it's also insulated. It's made, in, it's cut in a workwear cut, which is much more you know, big, you know, kind of boxy fitting. But that's the old school way that they made mobility a priority. So by offering a little bit more room in the cut, you were able to reach above you to reach down to pick things up. And that was sort of my issue with the Ship John Wills coat, which is, it's a great jacket, don't get me wrong. The thing is, I always felt that it was really more for, you could work in it, but it was really kind of geared more towards style. There's nothing wrong with that, that's totally fine. The Chief's coat, on the other hand, this thing is just a burly, insulated, tough as nails coat, unbelievable. And the cool thing is that in the time that I reviewed it, now probably not because of this, but during that time, they've done a whole bunch of different collaborations. Ones with NYX and Weatherwool, they made a coat which was called the Patriot. And so this was lined in the Weatherwool fabric, which is unbelievable stuff. And then they had the NYX uh, leather collar and it was just gorgeous. I actually picked myself up a collaboration between NYX and uh, heat straps. It wasn't the Patriots coat. It was just a NYX collab where they had the leather, uh, their 1964 leather collar. And it's fantastic. Now, here's the thing about the Chiefs coat, okay? In the beginning, I said you should pick one up because I have a feeling that when they start to gain some popularity, they're going to go up in price. I've made a few of these predictions in the past, like with field leathers, like with creosote, which used to be MYG handmade. Sometimes I have a pretty good knack for spotting things when before they get really popular. And this was sort of the same kind of thing. And lo and behold, here you go. Now in the modern day, you're paying about $500 for one of these bad boys. Now it's still worth it. There's no doubt about that. This is a premium coat with all USA made materials inside of it. Will probably outlast you unless you're doing some really abusive, hard, hard work. I mean, I'm talking like stone, concrete, stuff like that, or maybe even where you're doing welding and you have to worry about that kind of thing. Either way. With, with the exception of the most challenging job environments, this coat will probably outlast you. Number two is the redesigned Carhartt Force Tees. Now, Carhartt has gotten some pretty bad publicity this year. And believe me, I see your comments. I know what your feelings are on the brand. Regardless, I see that it, it's my job to talk about the products in and of themselves, leave the politics to everybody else, since everybody has their own stance on that kind of thing. Now, either way, when I went down to Texas, I went down to Austin and hung out with a bunch of the beard brand guys. You know, as you might notice, I got a little bit more length going on here, uh, trying to, you know, see what I can do with this. But anyway, when I went down there, I thought, what kind of a gift could I give to the guys who I'm with? And so I actually had a whole bunch of these made up, the Carhartt Force Tees with my logo, uh, which has been embroidered on the sleeve. Now, on the other sleeve, they have their, the Carhartt Force there. Uh, but I, I thought, you know, hey, we're in Texas after all. What a cool idea to kind of have some of these nice, lightweight, breathable shirts for them. Uh, and actually, I kind of ordered too many of them. I ordered a whole bunch. And so what I'm gonna do is actually give these away to my Patreon, the, the people who are a member of my Patreon. Uh, as long as they're a large and, and you know, whatever, then this will kind of be like my Christmas present to them. But these are great. I do think they're actually better than the old ones that they used to make with the perforations on the side. I wore these down in Austin, Texas, as I mentioned. Took the family to Disney World and I basically wore one of these every single day. And they really do keep you nice and cool. So for the summertime, I think they just did a great job in redesigning this t-shirt. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to wear in the summer. Now I could be a little biased here, one of my favorite boots of the year is the NYX Heritage Tanker. This was a collaboration that I did with NYX where we took their original tanker boot, which was basically a Builder Pro with no laces on it, and made it into a bit more of a refined boot. They found some original old stock cat's paw heels. The, I think it was a built right front sole, um, half sole. The first half sole that NYX has ever done, as a matter of fact. And then also did it in some T-Core leather. So it was done in a really cool, refined way where it originally was a work boot and then we took it and kind of made it more of a heritage uh, boot which is why it had the name the heritage tanker 
I've been wearing these things like crazy. They are probably the most comfortable boots that I have right now. I think mostly because of the lack of laces on the top. So I have a I have a tall instep, which means that my fat my foot is kind of fat and somewhat tall. So that means a lot of times Chelsea boots are a little bit constricting and I can feel that on the top of my foot. Um, same thing goes with laces. So I find that the, the straps, the buckles are a lot more comfortable. When I put these things on, they're, they're just great. They're one of my favorite things to wear. I think Nyx did a fantastic job. My, in, okay, my, my part of this collaboration was so small compared to what Nyx did with it that I almost feel bad mentioning my name with it, okay? So, you know, when you have an idea or you throw some, you know, some creative dif different kind of thoughts out there, and then somebody actually has to go and make that a reality, I think the real, the real credit has to go to the maker. So Nyx did a fantastic job with these. Uh, I think they still do offer them, although you won't be able to get all the specialty kind of stuff that we had, the cat's paw heels. I'm not sure that that leather is still available. It might have just been a limited time thing, but they still do offer this tanker boot in the more refined look. I just, I think they're dynamite. They go with everything. I'm not a big fan of black leather boots, but these have been some of my favorites, definitely of this year. The Jim Green African Ranger. Now, this is a boot that when I first saw it, I really don't know how I could have taken it. I was looking at them like, I don't know if I really get it. You know, I, I saw the way the laces were done, that kind of section there. I, I guess I just didn't really, I don't know, something about it didn't jive with my, my style or whatever, right? But I said, okay, I, I love Jim Green. They're always doing something interesting. Got a pair of them for review. Um, loved them. Really did love them. For a lightweight hiker boot or kind of like all around every single day kind of boot, these are just great. They're light, they're capable. That sole that they developed is nice and is soft, but it also has a lot of traction. There's just a lot to like, and for about 169 bucks, you can't go wrong. As a matter of fact, when I was wearing them, I started thinking about the, the analogy of the AMC Eagle and how the AMC Eagle was this ugly looking kind of utilitarian thing that, that started to grow on you. Like the looks kind of started to, to actually appeal to you after a while. And that's the same thing that happened with this boot. After a little while, I started going, you know what? So that's such a bad looking boot after all. So, uh, and you guys agreed, that video got a lot of views. A lot of people picked them up and are very happy with them. Jim Green just keeps doing interesting things. I love seeing an outside perspective. I mean, being here in the US, you know, New England, I kind of have my own worldview, but when you start to see it, especially like South Africa, where Jim Green is from and how they're donating one pair, I think for every 10 sold to an African Ranger, uh, it's just really cool. I love that kind of thing. It expands your worldview and it gives you a more of an appreciation of what's happening out there. The Grease Point Workwear Work Jean. I knew that this was going to be one that was going to get a ton of comments, especially for people who are going, you're crazy. I would never spend $350 on a work pant. I get it. You know what? Neither would I as far as putting them to work in the ditches. Okay. But on the other hand, Working in the garage, working outside, doing finished carpentry, the things where you're really not whomping on your clothes as much, for that, I would. Now, I have the, the nice excuse of having this channel so I can make some purchases that maybe are a little unlikely, but with the idea of shining a spotlight on a tr just a fantastic maker. And Amos over there at uh, Grease Point Workwear is definitely one of those. These have become a pair of jeans that I wear, wear casually as well as at work. But I found that over time, and I've had them for about eight months now, that I'll actually tend to wear them more around home. So the things that I'll do here, uh, whether it's working on the cars or working on this old house, that's where I'll wear these jeans. When it comes to actual work, um, usually that's something else a little bit, uh, kind of a, a bit more technical, I guess, because I feel that it's a bit more bang for your buck. Uh, $350 is a lot of money for work jeans, no doubt about that. You can buy a lot of Levi's for that. You can buy some Carhartts or Snickers workwear or True Work or uh, 1620, you name it. A lot of other different workwear companies out there. This is sort of a specific tool for a specific purpose. The same kind of person who might buy these is probably the same person who's buying a stiletto hammer. You know, and if you know what that is, then you know what I'm talking about. It's a very expensive hammer, but they're, they're amazing. Um, and so I think that's kind of who this was geared towards. As far as work wear goes, it's definitely toting the line. It's it's walking that line. <clears throat> as far as work wear goes, it's walking that line between heritage and work wear. Um, and that's sort of where I find that I like a lot of different things. So either way, grease point work wear, 
awesome. The weather wool product, Al's Anorak, really realigned my perception. What an amazing product. I have heard about them for so long and, and wanted to review them and I finally got a chance. And it was, it was a product where I was like, you know what? I've gotta put this thing through some really long-term use to, to get to know it and to be able to provide a good review. And that's what I did. I mean, I actually had this thing for months and used it. Uh, when I first got it, it snowed. When, when I, it went through the summer, now it's cold again. I was able to use it in a lot of different ways and I was just so impressed with this thing. Uh, really what it comes down to it, if I had to get rid of like everything and leave only maybe five pieces, this would be among them. It's not quite a hoodie, it's not quite a jacket, it's an anorak, it's just such a versatile piece, way warmer than you would think, and just so damn convenient. When you're walking around, a lot of times I'm looking for a place to maybe put my phone or my wallet or whatever it is, my keys. This thing has pockets all over it, and they all get out of the way, and they're all very, very convenient. I gotta tell you, this has been one of my favorite pieces, one of the ones that I really cherish, and definitely one of the ones that, if it came down to it, I would hold on to above some others. My Himmel Brothers wallet. Let me tell you something. Got my pocket right here. I had never thought that I would carry another wallet with a lanyard. I used to have one with a lanyard on it, and then I just stopped carrying it. I don't know why. I thought, eh, you know, it's not really worth it. Number one, my kids love to play with this thing. They come along and they'll like grab onto it and pretend it's like a truck horn, and then they'll they just love it. But the wallet itself, I've had I haven't had a bifold in a long time, but. I've got to tell you, I, I'm in love with this thing. Um, we're actually getting married. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, this is just a fantastic wallet. Probably the one that really impressed me. Of all the wallets that I've tried, and there have been many, many wallets, okay? So like minimalist wallets, bifold, trifold, front pocket wallets, uh, money clips, all kinds of different things. This has been my favorite. I just, I love the build quality. It's a tank. It's not a wallet if you like minimal wallets because there's a lot of leather there. Um, but when you, you have to be a certain kind of person, I think, to appreciate this. This is that same kind of overbuilt quality as the heat straps chief coat, as I mentioned, but just made up the way Himmel does everything, which is just top notch from, from tip to tail. Couldn't ask for anything more from this wallet. Can't wait to see what it does uh, with a few more years of uh, use and abuse. The Ruiter Tassen Overland series of bags. When I first got them, I, I, I always try to spend some time with the product before I begin formulating an opinion, just so I get to really know it. I've been bitten a few times in the past by not doing that. So I always try to spend a little bit of time. Since I've done that review, I've had a chance to travel to different places with it. So as I mentioned, going to Texas, going to Florida, um, some places up here in New England, a little bit like you know weekend trips and stuff, going to New Hampshire. I've been using this series of bags, uh, especially the backpack. Now I thought that the duffel was gonna be the real standout, but I gotta tell you what, that backpack is awesome. It was my carry-on anytime I get on a plane. Uh, it was able to handle everything that I threw at it. I love the little water bottle pocket on the side. And in a sea of these nylon bags, which are fine, I just, I love the look of it. It's, it has not failed me once. It really does live up to its name. And uh, just that overbuilt quality again, where it just feels like you could use this thing into the end of time. That is a, a through line that I've started to notice that I really like is something that just feels like you'll have it long enough to pass it down or long enough that somebody will discover it in a closet of yours and go, man, what is this? You know, they don't make them like this anymore. Maybe we're living in a time where they do make it like this and in the future they won't, who knows? But I really do, I love this series of bags. It's been so cool to get to connect again with Root or Tassin. They just have a very unique a very unique take on things. They also have like an Indiana Jones style of bag out there right now. I think they're made out of new buck leather. So hopefully we'll do some more stuff in the future because they have a lot of cool stuff coming out as well. But the Ruiter Tassin Overland series has been a standout. The Dehen 1920 shawl collar cardigan sweater coat 2.0. That's, that's the name of this thing. And they're amazing. I originally bought this when I was doing a Good, Better, Best series on shawl collared cardigans. That is really hard for me to say. And this was the standout best of the best. It's heavy, it's durable, uh, really warm, and it has this look about it that no other one that I bought had. It has sort of this dressed up, I don't know, this vibe about it. It just, it makes you feel like a million bucks. And it definitely is between a coat 
and a uh, sweater. It's thick enough. You know, it has the buttons in the front. It's just built to a standard that I haven't seen before. I am so excited to get more stuff from Dehen 1920. I hope I'm pronouncing that right because their, their stuff looks like the American version of Ironheart. And I know that there are other brands like Rogue Territory, Free Note Cloth, local domestic brands, which could probably also, you know, you could say the same thing about, but uh, as far as knits go, they look like they are just end level, really great. And I loved them enough that I actually bought a second one. So I had one in black, which I used for the video. And then I had another one um, on my mind that I bought recently in gray. So uh, my favorite shawl collar, shawl collar cardigan, is the Dehen 1920 shawl, collar, cardigan, sweater, coat 2.0. Jesus. All right, let's wrap this up here. This is the Protec 5. The Protec Runt 5. Man, oh man, do I love this knife. Now, this is in their brass, and you know, brass is kind of heavy. I like the weight of it, though, especially because it's sort of smaller. So you really, it does not bothersome at all. But the way that thing comes out of there is so damn satisfying. I mean, I sit there all day and just do this. And uh, it's just incredible. Now it's started to get nice and dark around the back. The way that brass does, it started to shine up a little bit where you put it in your pocket. Um, just I love that patina capability of this knife. And it works great. I mean, for my typical everyday use, let me tell you what I do with it, okay? I'm not even going to like BS you and say that I was out in the woods or something like that. I opened the Amazon packages with it. Yesterday, I cut myself a loaf, a loaf of pumpkin bread with it that somebody had brought into work, and it was delicious. You can still kind of smell it on there. Everyday tasks, okay? Th that's what this is perfect for. And when it comes to EDC, I think that something that does that is just uh, is what you need. I mean, you know, you could get a Sebenza or something really, really big in your pocket, and everybody has a different need, but I gotta tell you, I'm a big fan of these little knives. Now, the saying is, is that you know, you can do everything that you can do with a little knife with a big knife, but you can't do everything that you can do with a big knife with a little knife. I found that, with very few exceptions, I have never wanted a, a larger knife. I think that ProTech is probably going to be probably my favorite brand going into the future. I think if I'm going to buy another knife, I might get another ProTech. We'll see. My buddy Taylor from uh, Best Damn EDC is trying to, trying to convince me of some other knives too. But, uh, man, this ProTech is killer. I love it. I really do love it. So those are my top 10 products of 2022. And looking back, man, this is a hell of a lineup. These 10 things here are like, just, uh, they're, they're, they're top tier. That doesn't get any better than this. How cool is it that I have an opportunity to, to check these things out and then bring them to you as an option? Sometimes, you know, eh, that's not my thing. I'm not gonna buy it, but maybe sometimes, and hopefully, you look at something that I've reviewed on this channel and you go, damn, that's exactly what I want and I didn't know was available. That's kind of the whole point here is to bring smaller, lesser known brands and, and you know products that are really just a step above but maybe don't have the marketing budget to your attention. That's what I hope to do here. Anyway, 2022 has been a great year and in no small part because you have been here supporting this channel and watching and commenting. Um, it's just been fantastic. I can't thank you enough for being a part of this crazy journey that I've been going on with this YouTube thing. Started off as, eh, what the hell, let me see what I can do. Um, became a hobby and now is, is something beyond that. So thank you so much. I really can't, I can't express that enough. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.